Hi and welcome to another video. So I've been using my Kibio Iris Revision 8 keyboard for quite a while and I'm very satisfied with it. And I have compiled a new firmware for it which is well compatible and I want to show you why I did it and how you can do it also. So this video will focus on the uh, Kibio Iris Rev 8 specifically, but if you have any other keyboard which also has like a similar controller like a, a Raspberry Pi in it and has a large enough memory so you can uh, put in like a lot of layers, a lot of macros in it, then this video is for you and you will probably be able to transpose the knowledge in this uh, tutorial for your own specific case. So let's get into it. The keyboard itself comes with a firmware that is compatible with VIA, so if you are satisfied with only having four layers and the limited functionality, or at least the seemingly limited functionality of the VIA configurator, you can just connect your keyboard and start switching around the keys, but personally I wanted to use VIAL because VIAL is able to switch between different keyboard layouts, so you can for example, use the Hungarian keyboard layout to rearrange it and you don't need to just uh, convert the English default layout into Hungarian in your head for rearranging uh, the layouts. This is of course not working with the factory firmware, it's not compatible with VL, so you have to refresh the firmware. Of course you could just uh, make a custom firmware using the web-based QMK configurator, so in, in this you can find the Iris Rev 8 and then you can use as much as 16 layers if you want. And uh, this web configurator also has the ability to switch the keyboard layout. So if you are using like a French or like other European keyboard layout, you don't have to worry about that. It doesn't only have the NC American layout. The problem with this is that whenever you change your keyboard layout, then you have to rebuild the firmware and uh, refresh the firmware on your keyboard. Now if you have to rebuild the firmware itself, then why don't just build the Vial firmware, which unfortunately by default only has four layers, but it is an open source firmware, so we can change it and increase the number of layers easily. Luckily with the Raspberry Pi controller we won't hit any memory constraints when increasing the number of layers here. So unfortunately the documentation for how to make this work is a bit sparse, so let me help you out. So this link here for the Linux app image in the download vial page is going to just give you the app image for the configurator. So this will be the configurator application, but for this to work, as you could see, you need the proper vial enabled firmware on your keyboard. So you'll have to go to the GitHub page, so you can click here and this will take us to GitHub for vial and they have the source code for both the configurator and the firmware, which is very good, we like that. So let's go to the firmware a repository which we will be able to clone here using git. But first, it is a good idea to configure or, or to confirm rather that you have the keyboard supported. So you can click on this keyboards link here and this will take you to this very large and long page. So here we are working on the Kibio Iris keyboard. So I have to go down to the letter K. There it is, Kibio and uh, I want the iris here, and iris we have Rev8, so I have the Rev8 keyboard, and uh, they already have the files here. But first things first, so for VL to work on Linux, first you have to set up a UDEV rule for your VL enabled device, which you can find the exact descriptions of how, of how to do it on the website of VL in the documentation. But I use a very minimalistic thing, so if you have sudo privileges, which you should have, you just go into slash etc slash udev slash rules.d and you can create this new file, which uh, you can see this is my file here and add this one line into this file and then save it. And once you reboot your computer, this should work. So for building the uh, firmware, you can find the instructions on the QMK documentation website. So QMK firmware, which is docs.qmk.fm and in the tutorial section for 
setup, I think yeah, we are in setup here. You can go to the prepare your build environment section, go to Linux slash WSL to get the instructions for Linux. And these are the different distributions. They have the instructions how to install these specified packages. So I have Arsenix. So I will use this command. I mean, a dash dash needed dash dash no confirm is, is a bit superfluous, I guess, but I can install git python pip and lib ffi. And python pip is needed because the QMK software that you can use to configure your uh, firmware is uh, available from the pip repositories, from the python uh, repositories. But for Archonix, you can actually get that from just the repositories using the pacman-s uh, QMK. Uh, git we will need to uh, clone the repository for the firmware. So let's uh, jump into our terminal here and uh, I will confirm if I have the software I need. So I will need to check the, with pacman-qi if I have git, I have git and I have qmk, I have qmk and I have libffi. Okay, I have everything here. And of course, if you need to install it on Archlinux, you can always just use sudo pacman-s qmk to get it done. So let's uh, clone the repository. So for that, we will go back to GitHub here and uh, just copy this uh, line here and go back to the terminal and uh, git clone and insert the repository and then just wait until we get everything. Okay, so now that we have copied everything, so you can just check it with an ls command, that we have the vial-qmk directory here, so let's uh, cd into it. And this is everything is inside here. Okay, so now we are in the directory we need to be in. So let's uh, run QMK setup. That's what we need. So it will complain about the version of our AVR GCC here. It is too new. 13.2 is newer than 8. And it will require us to downgrade to 8. Version 8, if we want to use all the functionality, there will be something in the firmware that won't work, but I did not figure out how to downgrade to an older version of AVR GCC. And uh, the function that is disabled by not having the proper AVR GCC version is not a function that I needed. So for me, this worked out. And now it asks us if you want to clone all these submodules, which we of course want. So press the Y key and enter. It might not write out anything to the screen, but it will do what it has to do. So let's wait until it finishes. So now that is done, we can use the QMK compile command to compile our default firmware here. So this should be dash KB for keyboard. And this is Kibio slash iris slash rev eight and dash KL for the keyboard layout default. And I guess it will complain for us KM as key map. All right. So now it will compile our key map for us and it will it is copied, it will tell us it copied this file into the QMK firmware folder, which is where we are now. So let's clear this. And uh, using the file command, we can um, confirm that this is indeed a UFT, UF2 firmware image for the Raspberry Pi RP2040, which is what we have in our keyboard. Okay, so now we tested that we can build the, the default firmware. So now it is time for us to modify this firmware because we have a Raspberry Pi 2040. So we don't need to save that much space. We can have the eight layers. We can have a lot of macros in our keyboard. So let's do our modifications. And for that, we will git branch. I like to use like a personal 
branch here because then I know this is my personal branch and then git switch personal and now that we are in our personal branch we can move to the directories where we will need to modify the files. So let's change directory into keyboard kibio iris and in this one there should be uh, key maps. Yes, so let's see the key maps. And in this, we will have another directory called vial. Yes, so that's what we need. We will cd into vial. And let's see, these are the files we need to edit. And let's start with config.h. I am using nvim, but you use whatever text editor you like. So let's go, I just uh, go down here, I will add my own little comment here, added by nice micro to support more layers and macros or something like this. And what we need to do is hash sign and we will add define, define, and why don't I just copy, this is going to be define dynamic key map layer count 8 and we will define a dynamic key map macro count which will be 64 if I manage to get this here. So dynamic key map macro count 64 and uh, this is the end of this file. Now next we need to go into keymap.c keymap.c, so these are four layers here, QWERTY, lower, raise, adjust, but we need to add four more and those will be, so let me just copy this here once and uh, I will name it, what will I name it, layer five, very creative I know, and the number it has will be four and then I will copy it three more times so you can have uh, layer six, uh, seven and eight, which will be of course seven, six and five. Okay, so we added the names of the four layers and now we can add the four layers here, also in this enum. So this will be also layer five, and let me just copy it and <laughs> change layer six, seven, and eight. So now we have this also, but now we need to also work on the layout here. So this is how it looks like. And what we need is empty layouts. And of course, luckily, we have this adjust layout over here, which the only thing we need to add is a little colon at the end over there. So this adjust layout will not be the last thing in this array. And then let's copy this and paste it right below. And of course we need to rename this to layer five, which is a layout and all these are empty in here. We need to copy this one, so layer five, six, seven, and eight. We'll have these layers, so this is going to be layer eight, this is seven, and uh, this is six. So now we did this. There are five, six, seven, eight, and this uh, colon is not needed there anymore. Okay, so this is done now. Yeah, I think we've finished the layout, so let's go to rules.mk. So let's save and quit this, and we'll go into rules.mk. And here, I don't know why, but someone disabled the RGB matrix. So I just delete this and save and quit. So now we can actually check our changes because we are in git. So git diff 
will show us all the things we are doing. So let's go back to CD, I guess back to QMK. And now, now we can try to compile our keyboard again, but we are not compiling the default. We are compiling the vial one because, and you can see that this is uh, here in the directory name as vial. And you can see now it is being compiled vigorously by our compiler. According to the QMK firmware manual for Raspberry Pi based keyboard, this is what we need to do to copy our compiled firmware to the keyboard first. The easiest way is to just tap the whatever key is assigned to the QK boot key code, or if there is not available, there are a few other options. And then we will have to copy the UF2 file to the USB disk that will appear. So the keyboard will pretend to be a USB disk. So this is the QK boot key code on your Kibio keyboard. It will uh, tell you on the Kibio website which buttons you have to press. And once you press it, once you press the key combination, the operating system will recognize the keyboard as a new drive, a new disk. And you can move this .uf2 file to this new disk. And that will basically copy the firmware to the keyboard. Once that is finished, the keyboard as a disk will disappear. One very important thing about the Kibio Iris keyboard is that you have to refresh the firmware on both of the sides of the keyboard. So this USB-C cable, which is connected to one of the sides, after you copy the firmware here, you have to unplug this and you have to plug the same USB cable that is coming from your computer to the other side of the keyboard and you will have to refresh the firmware on that side too. And whenever you change your firmware for any reason, you have to make sure that you refresh them on both sides of your keyboard. It will not copy through this <laughs> cable from one side to another. Once the firmware is uploaded to the keyboard, it will be recognized by the Vile app. And you can see that we have the eight layers available just as we set up and all the macros that you can imagine. And now you can use the full functionality of the Vial application so you can remap your keyboard or you can use the matrix tester to check whether you assemble the keyboard correctly and all the keys work as they should. And this is it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for following me through this tutorial. And if you want to see more, of course, you are welcome to subscribe to this channel. Give me a like or a uh, comment down below if you have anything to add to the conversation and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye bye.